Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13 we read like this. You shall not murder. You shall not murder. This is the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. Now we are going to reflect about this fifth commandment. There are so many sins that we knowingly or unknowingly commit which comes under this title. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 17 we read like this. You shall not murder. You shall not murder. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Now, let's examine our conscience and see how we ever attacked anybody or hurt, wounded, harmed physically or emotionally or in any other sense, harmed or attacked anyone in the name of religion, in the name of caste, in the name of language, in the name of nationality, in the name of color, or any other purpose, or any other reason, have you attacked or hurt anybody? Those things also comes under this title murder. Because sometimes we have this hatred which is starting inside of our body, then we will start expressing it in our body, and it will be shown through our mouth, through our words, through our expressions, through our anger. And the next step is hurting and harming the other person. And the last one is killing or murder. So anything in this process will come under this title. Therefore, if you have ever happened to attack, raise your hands against your mom or dad or mom or brother or sister, husband or wife or any other people out of anger or irritation, uncontrollable fear or any other reason will come under this title we need to confess it at the earliest we read like this let us read these passages bible passages matthew chapter 5 verse 21 onwards gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse 21 let's read matthew 5 21 you have heard that it was said you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times to those of ancient times you shall not murder you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. So God says, Jesus says, in the ancient time, that means in the Old Testament, it said, you shall not murder. But then again, he says, verse 22, we read like this. He said, but I say to you. But I say to you. Jesus always say like this, anything that he wants to speak, he caught it from the Old Testament and he say, I say to you. And he says, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. You will be liable to judgment. In the Old Testament, if you are murdering somebody, you will be liable to judgment. But here Jesus says, even if you are angry with your brother or sister, sometimes you are angry with your husband, wife, your spouse, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors. If you are angry with a brother or sister, you are, will be liable to judgment. You will be judged against. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. If you say, if you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Even for the words that we speak, negative, hurting, destroying words that we speak, even the messages that we send and share it with our friends by gossiping, nowadays it is a very serious tendency that we all all the gossips that we want to speak about somebody you write it we write it down in a piece of i mean we, we write it down as a message in the whatsapp or other social media platforms and post it in the facebook twitter and all the other social media media platform and we spread it and spoil the name of the other person this is the modern day gossips and the lord says Anyone who speak through your words, you attack and hurt others, will be liable to the hell of fire. Let's examine our conscience and see how we ever spoken ill of others, how we ever destroyed the image of someone else, how we ever insulted or hurt somebody through our words and actions, behavior, how we ever thought of harming anyone. 
let's ask for forgiveness and pardon from the lord and say lord i'm so sorry i have committed the sin against the fifth commandment forgive me wash me clean in your precious blood i need your healing touch in this Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. If you have shown any kind of partiality to anybody, sometimes we do show partiality. Maybe you have so many children, but you love only one son, and you always compare your other son with the other son, this son. by doing so you are destroying one person's personality if you say you are good for nothing and you say the other person you are the best one you are destroying the personality of another person in your own family how we ever destroyed the personality of one somebody character assassination we call it let's examine our conscience and see if we have done any of these things all these sins come under sins comes under the fifth commandment Let's beg for forgiveness and pardon from the Lord and say Lord I'm so sorry during this lenten season I promise you that I will be very careful about every word that I speak I will never hurt anyone through my words and actions and behavior I will be always aware that I'm I'm accountable for every word that I speak We read like this Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 36 Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 36 I tell you I tell you on the day of judgment on the day of judgment you will have to give an account you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter for every careless word you utter I tell you I tell you on the day of judgment on the day of judgment you will have to give an account you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter for every careless word you utter every careless words that we speak against others our own family members husband wife and children sometimes even cursing them you will never be successful you are useless like these many cursing words these are these are verbal assassination because we are physically to assassinate or kill someone we are so scared of the consequences therefore we verbally destroy others therefore all these things come under the fifth commandment verse 37 we read like this verse 37 for by your words for by your words you will be justified you will be justified and by your words and by your words you will be condemned you will be condemned let's examine our conscience and see how we committed any of those sins which we mentioned now which comes under the fifth commandment if so let's beg for forgiveness and pardon and say lord i'm so sorry make sure that you go for confession and confess all these sins there are so many murders and killing and mass killings are happening just because they have some hatred towards the other the community or another person this hatred and anger which is inside will grow 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 at the end you will give birth to the death or killing let's examine our conscience and listen how you ever physically mentally or emotionally tortured your spouse your husband your wife your children your parents your family members have you ever done this emotionally emotionally physically or in any other way physically or mentally have you tortured continuous attack continuous cr- criticism continuous murmuring and complaining against your spouse and going around and telling against your husband or wife in front of others telling your neighbors about your husband and wife telling your family members and speaking against your own family members have you done this it is so destroying it destroys so many families god cannot tolerate this kind of attitude just because husband has got a small problem wife has got a small problem you are making it so uh exaggerating and going around and telling everyone informing them and harming the image of the family members god will never tolerate this these are very harmful this destroy this is against the relationship called love it is destroying your family setup it will even spoil the children's future your children will become ri- violent and restless and disturbed and they will fall into wrong things immediately without any delay so this is the consequence of these kinds of tendencies 
how you ever done such kinds of things and have you are you addicted to such kinds of wrong things the lord is asking you to repent and beg for forgiveness and pardon let's read ephesian chapter 5 was 25 onwards Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 we read like this Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands husbands love your wives love your wives just as Christ loved the church just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her and gave himself up for her the way Jesus loved the church husband has to love the wife and now next one in order to make her holy in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word by the word verse 27 so as to present the church to himself in splendor so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or wrinkle without a spot or wrinkle or anything of kind or anything of kind. yes so that she may be holy and without blemish yes so that she may be holy and without blemish verse 28 we read in the same way in the same way husband should love their wives husband should love their as wives as they do their own bodies as they do their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself he who loves his wife loves himself 29 we read for no one ever hates his own body for no one ever hates his own body but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it but he nourishes and tenderly cares just for it just as christ does for the church just as christ does for the church verse 30 we read because we are members of his body because we are members of his body was 31 we read like this for this reason for this reason man a man will leave his father and mother a man will leave his father and, and be mother, joined to his wife and be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh and the two will become one flesh was 32 we read like this this is a great mystery this is a great mystery and i am applying it to christ and the church and i'm applying it to christ and the church praise the lord praise the lord let's also read colossians chapter 3 verse 19 colossians chapter 3 verse 19 we read like this colossians chapter 3 verse 19 we read like this colossians chapter 3 verse 19 husbands husbands love your wives and never treat them harshly love your wives and never treat them harshly so now in the olden times during the time of Jesus no wives used to speak against the husbands and because wives were considered almost like a slave therefore they have no voice the according to the Jewish understanding women have no voice therefore there was no question of wife attacking the husbands that is why in the Bible you will never see anywhere wife asking wives to be treat husband gently or um, do not be harsh or rude with them because it was not the case but nowadays the story is different so equally husband and wives are equally responsible for the destruction of the families so whatever wherever husbands are asked to do something their wives are also asked to do the same thing husbands love your wives and never treat them harshly the same way wives love your husbands and never treat them harshly Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. So these verses should be read like this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 20. We read like this. Children, obey your parents. Children, obey your in parents. In everything. In everything. For this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. For this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. We read like this. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. We read like this. Husbands, husbands, in the same way, in the same show way, show consideration for your wives, show consideration for your wives in your life together, in your life together, paying honor to the woman, paying honor to the woman as the weaker sex, as the weaker sex, since they too are also heirs of the gracious gift of life, since they too are also heirs of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing may hinder your prayers, so that nothing may hinder your prayers. My dear brothers and sisters, Bible says, husbands and wives, show consideration for your husband and wife respect them honor them because if you harm your husband or wife if you speak against them or if you do some kind of wrong things against them if you gossip against them if you wound them insult them accuse them blame them murmur against them grumble against them then it will hinder your prayers that is what is written in the last sentence so that nothing may hinder your prayers any unforgiveness, anger against your spouse will block your prayer life. Block your prayers. All your prayers will be blocked. Your prayers will not reach heaven. 
therefore make sure that you reconcile with your husband reconcile with your wife and love them even if they have something wrong please overlook the sins of your husband and wife if you don't overlook the sins of your husband and wife who will do this if you don't just ignore the small small mistakes of your life partner then who will do it if you don't do it therefore make sure that you be 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 uh, gentle with your husband and wife let's read this passage proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 a capable wife who can find a capable wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels she is far more precious than jewels was that love and we read the heart of her husband trust in her the heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lake lack of gain and he will have no lack of gain was told we read like this she does him good she does him good and not harm and not harm all the days of her life all the days of her life who can find a wife like this this is what the bible says praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus let's read ephesian chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 ephesian chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 let's read this word of god with him uh, well, let's read verse 1 onwards they i therefore i therefore the prisoner in the lord the prisoner in the lord beg you to lead a life beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called worthy of the calling to which you have been called so saint paul is urging all of you and me and all of us i and he says i beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling if you are husband and wife if you are a wife you are called to be a wife that is your calling If you are a husband you are called to be a husband that is your calling. If you are parents you are called to be parents that is your calling. The Lord says the priest the, the the word of God says I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So this is a calling. It's a vocation to be a husband to be a wife to be a parent it is a vocation. And the Lord says with all humility and gentleness with patience bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace praise the lord praise the lord there are so many husbands and wives i have seen waiting to accuse the other person i have spoken to many husbands and wives to bring peace the desire that i have to bring peace in them in their family in their unity they don't have because they are, each one is busy justifying themselves and what are they going to gain by justify themselves in front of their spouse if they are justify themselves in front of the whole universe we can understand but they just just want to justify themselves in front of their husband in front of their husband they want to be holy in front of their wife they want to be holy they just want to justify in front of their husband or wife that's all for that they will go to any extent even if they, they don't mind to hurt their wife hurt their husband this is a clear sign that they are not christians though they are nominal christians they are baptized christian but they are not following jesus christ let's examine our conscience do we have a tendency to hurt our spouse just because we want to justify ourselves in front of them we read like this with all humility and gentleness with all humility and gentleness with patience with patience bearing with one another in love bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace in the bond of peace this is what a christian is supposed to do that is why saint paul says i beg of you i beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let's pray for all our husbands and wives, all our family members, all our families, all the husbands and wives who are joining right now who are struggling to love each other, struggling to forgive each other. But busy justifying in front of others, in front of neighbors, in front of the family members. If you win an argument, you will lose a relationship. If you lose an argument, you will win a relationship. Which one you want? 
if you win an argument you will lose a relationship if you lose an argument you will win a relationship it is better to lose the argument and win the relationship forever therefore never justify yourself but justify your spouse you will you will gain a soul you will gain a family you will protect your children one small action will protect the whole family an unforgiveness to anyone do you keep unforgiveness and hatred against somebody do you hate certain people and avoid them and not talking to them and do you wish harm to certain people do you wish it is better that they die and you wanted their death have you ever thought of it the lord is asking you to confess your sins and forgive as for forgiveness let's read this word of god first john chapter 3 was 15 first john chapter 3 was 15 let's read all who hate a brother or sister all who hate a brother or sister are murderers a murderers because murder comes from hatred so anybody who has a hatred inside against your brother or sister you are a murderer the murder spirit of murder is already enter inside therefore make sure that you forgive everyone who who has hurt you all who hate a brother or sister are murderers all who hate a brother or sister are murderers and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them praise the lord praise the lord this examine our conscience and see do we have any hatred anger and forgiveness against anybody let's also read hebrew chapter 12 verse 14 and 15 we read like this hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 and 15 let's read this word of god pursue peace with everyone pursue peace with everyone and the holiness and the holiness without which without which no one will see the lord no one will see the lord without holiness nobody can see god many people reject god they reject the existence of god because they cannot see god they cannot see god because they are not holy why they are not holy because they don't pursue peace with everyone there is unforgiveness anger revenge and holiness because of these there is no holiness without there is since there is no holiness it is difficult for them to ex- believe in the existence of god they cannot see god verse 15 see to it see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of god that no one fails to obtain the grace of god that no root of bitterness springs up that no root of bitterness springs and up and causes trouble and causes trouble through it through it many become defiled many become defiled the lord says if there is a root of bitterness inside any root of bitterness may not be you are expressing it outside but there is a root of bitterness bitter experience bitter feeling against certain people you don't want to talk to someone you are not comfortable in front of somebody in your family relatives or friends there is a root of bitterness if there is a root of bitterness it will defile the whole body through it many become defiled that is what the bible says through it through bitterness bitter feeling bitter anger irritation disturbance bitterness through it many become defiled praise the lord praise the lord Let's read Sirach chapter 28 verse 1 onwards. Sirach chapter 28 verse 1 onwards. Let's read this word of God. Sirach chapter 28 verse 1 on the vengeful will face the Lord's vengeance. The vengeful will face the Lord's vengeance. Those who are vengeful, remember there is a vengeance from God. for he keeps a strict account of their sins for he keeps a strict account of all their sins all those who are vengeful all those who keep an unforgiveness against others your sins will be counted very strictly if you say your husband is like this your wife is like this and then if you are having the same problem your problem will be taken more seriously than the one whom you blame the vengeful will face the lord's vengeance for he keeps a strict account of their sins verse 2 forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done then your sins will be pardoned when you pray and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray if you are not forgiving your enemy you are forgiving your neighbor your husband your wife your children 
then when you are pr- when you pray your pa- your sins will not be pardoned verse 3 we read like this does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the lord does anyone harbor anger against another does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the lord and expect healing from the lord anybody who keeps unforgiveness in their heart if you are expecting a healing from the lord don't expect it it is impossible to get healing as long as you are keeping unforgiveness hatred and revenge it is very difficult for you to get healing of your body healing of your sicknesses first you forgive then healing will instantly follow many people not getting healing because they are keeping harbor anger against another verse 4 we read like this if one has no mercy toward another if one has no mercy toward another who is like himself who is like himself can he then seek pardon for his own sins can he then seek pardon for his own sins if you don't show the mercy and pardon to others how can you expect pardon for your sins verse 5 we read like this if a mere mortal harbors wrath if a mere mortal harbors wrath who will make an atoning sacrifice for his sins who will make an atoning sacrifice for his sins verse 6 we read remember the end of your life remember the end of your life remember today or tomorrow we are all going to die soon or later we are going to die remember the end of your life and set enmity aside and set enmity aside keep your enmity aside because you're going to die soon remember corruption and death remember corruption and death and be true to the commandments and be true to the commandments verse 7 we read like this remember the commandments remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor and do not be angry with your neighbor remember the covenant of the most high remember the covenant of the most high and overlook faults and overlook faults at the end it says is you have to forgive not because the other person is right even if the other person is mis- making mistake just ignore it overlook their faults overlook your husband's faults overlook the wife's faults just ignore it everyone has their own mistakes just ignore if you're going for all the accusing accusing for even for minute minute sins why not mistake the way they speak the way they walk the way they were move if you are accusing for everything you are going to destroy the beautiful family god has given you remember you are last days remember the end of your life and overlook the sins of others permitted abortion promoted abortion and uh, legally voted in favor of abortion bills we need to ask forgiveness from god and confess it very is a very 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 serious sin let's read this word of god psalm 139 was 13 onwards psalm 139 was 13 onwards we read like this for it was you who formed my inward parts for it was you who formed my inward you would knit me together in ma- my mother's womb you knit me together in my mother's womb you know every baby is born because it's not by mistake it's not by chance but it is god who formed them in the inward parts and go knitting together in the mother's womb therefore when you kill this baby in the womb you are destroying you are you know declaring a public battle war against god himself and you are you are destroying something which god started and which god has started in you and and you are destroying yourself you are killing yourself when you kill your own baby for it was the lord the bible says it was god who formed this baby and we are going against him and was 14 we read like this i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully every made every baby is fearfully and wonderfully made by god fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works that i know very well 
wonderful are your works that i know very well praise the lord praise the lord still we harm these babies was 15 we read like this my frame was not hidden from you my frame was not hidden from when you. i was being made in secret when i was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth intricately woven in the depths was of 16, the earth was 16 we read like this your eyes beheld my unformed substance your eyes beheld my unformed substance even before you are formed in the womb of your mother jesus knew you jesus knew you personally god knew you name by name god has a plan for you therefore there is a big question happening when is the baby after one month or two months three months is okay to abort these are the rules of the world who doesn't know how a baby is born being formed and who is the creator of this baby the lord says even before you are formed in the womb i know you personally your personality individuality started even before you are created in the womb therefore even if it is on the first day of the creation first day of the of the baby in the womb we have no right to kill in your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed even be, even when you are not existed in your in the womb of your mother everything is written about you that means you are a person even before you are created you are an individual you are before you are created even a, a baby is a individual a, a baby is a person even before the baby is created in the womb therefore we have no right to kill or destroy any any babies in the womb because we are eliminating a person an individual not a thing praise the lord praise the lord jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 we read like this before i formed you in the womb i knew you before i formed you in the womb i knew you and before you. you were born i consecrated you and before you were born i consecrated you i appointed you a prophet to the nations i appointed you a prophet to the nations god says before i formed you in the womb i knew you that means god knows a baby even before the baby is born in the womb that means a baby is a human being a individual a person even before the baby is born in the womb therefore anybody who does an abortion even if it is on the second day of the form or, or the or the creation it is a serious assassination of an individual is a murder it is a killing in the safest place in the world that is the womb of the mother let's read this word of god proverbs chapter 24 verse 11 and 12 proverbs chapter 24 verse 11 and 12 we read like this if you hold back from rescuing those taken away to death if you hold back from rescuing those taken away from those death, who go staggering to the slaughter those who go staggering to the slaughter if you say look we did not know this if you say look we did not know this does not he who weighs the heart perceive it does not he who weighs the heart perceive it does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it does not he who keeps watch over your soul and will he not it? repay all according to their deeds and will he not repay all according to their deeds the lord says you cannot wash yourself wash your hands and say i didn't know this seriousness i didn't know this is not supposed to be done the lord says he knows your heart he knows your intention he knows why you did it let's read genesis chapter 9 verse 6 genesis chapter 9 verse 6 we read like this whoever sheds the blood of a human whoever sheds the blood of a human by a human shall that person's blood be shed by a human shall that person's blood for be shed for in his own image god made human kind for in his own image god made human kind therefore any harm to a human being is an harm to god himself 